Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Please welcome Premier Christy Clark and the next Executive Council for the Province of British Columbia. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. So uh, <laughs> good afternoon, Premier. Minister-designates, elected and soon-to-be member of the Legisl Legislative Assembly, distinguished guests. My name is Marc-André Wallet, and I'm the Chief of Protocol for the Government of British Columbia. It is my pleasure to serve as Director of Ceremonies 
for an important announcement today by the Premier of British Columbia. We are very pleased and grateful to have the use of this space today here at the Port Metro Vancouver, the Vancouver Convention Centre and Canada Place. I would like to acknowledge that we are in the traditional territory of the Coast Salish people. And now I would like to ask Elder Mary Charles of the Muscombe First Nation to please come forward and give a few words of welcome. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so very honored and delighted, and I feel so privileged to be here this afternoon. And I thank you, Christy, with all my heart. She said I could call her Christy. <laughs> uh, and I want to thank my family. I was so lost when I first got here, and then I found my adopted son, Ed John, and my niece, Wendy Grant, and my daughter, Charlene. We were going crazy trying to find the right place. Would you believe I was born here and I get lost coming downtown? <laughs> and I was just looking across the inlet. I went to school across there because I was originally from the, and they changed their name to Slelwatooth. I'm from the Musqueam First Nation, God's Little Acre out near UBC. Everybody knows where Musqueam is, I'm sure. And as we do, and I better say congratulations. I see some familiar faces. I feel as though I know you. I see you on TV and in the newspapers. And so congratulations to every one of you. And as we do in our tradition, I'll start our afternoon with a little prayer. And you're more than welcome to stay seated because I know you just made yourself comfortable. <clears throat> Thank you, Great Spirit, for this new day. So much like yesterday and yet so very special. Thank you for family, friends, casual acquaintances, and strangers I meet only once. They are all part of your plan and in my life for a reason. Bless them today, Great Spirit, as you meet their needs and guide them accordingly to your will. Let us be one with our brothers and sisters in love and peace. Make us strong mentally, physically, and spiritually to lead the way for future generations and make this world a better place to live. May all your blessings and kindness be bestowed on everyone here this afternoon. Near or far, together or apart, Keep our loved ones close until we meet again. May your days be rich with joy. May your successes be frequent. May you have peace and comfort. And may your hearts know just how great you all are. Haichka. Haichka in our dialect is thank you. Did I say welcome to the Coast Salish traditional territory? I see a family from my Squamish from across the inlet, and I usually say, welcome to Musqueam traditional, but I'm sharing. <laughs> Thank you, Elder Mary Charles. And now I would like to invite 11-year-old Lisa Lee Campbell of Clearwater to please Lead us in the singing of O Canada. If you're sitting, please stand for the singing of our national anthem.
glorious and free. Thank you, Lisa Lee. What an, ama an amazing voice you have. And now I would like you all to welcome your premier, our premier, the Honorable Christy Clark. Thank you very much. Um, on election night, I, I may have understated how difficult a task it was <laughs> to get to this day today. <laughs> and so it is indeed a very uh, happy day for all those of us who worked so hard over the last month or so to make sure that we got here today. And we are here today in this place because we want British Columbians to have a chance to share in this important moment for the future of our, British, of our province here in British Columbia. We want British Columbians to see exactly how we will accomplish the great task that they have set out for us. And today we are here at this port, the busiest port in the country. <laughs> the busiest port in the country, Canada's gateway to the world, and our children's gateway to the future. That's what stands behind us today. This is where the opportunities that British Columbians work so hard to create come to fruition. This is where the opportunities that you work for every day reach out and meet the world. And so today, we stand before you deeply honored by the task that you have given us. Many of us here elected for our first term in government ready to work, optimistic for a bright future ahead, proud of our province, and alive to the challenges of our times. Yes, the global economy remains fragile, and recovery in places that surround us is slower than we would like. But it's just further confirmation that we must be strong. We must run a tight ship. There will be those asking us to spend more money, those asking us to grow government. But no matter how tough the discussions get, no matter how vigorous the debate becomes, British Columbians expect us to have those discussions in a respectful way, in a way that respects taxpayers, 
in a way that respects the working parents, the retired seniors, the young people who are just starting out and trying to get established. Respect for those who can't afford to pay more in taxes. Respect most of all for future generations of British Columbians because we simply cannot burden our children and their children with debt. When it is their turn to lead, our children deserve the chance to be able to make their own choices about their own future. Not a future that's burdened by choices that we made for them today. That is at the heart of our shared values as British Columbians. Those are the values that define us and have always defined us as a province. And so for every one of us, from First Nations to settlers who have been coming here for hundreds of years, to the newcomers who are still coming to our shores today, we all believe that our children deserve a better future than the one that we had. We all believe in our obligation to look after one another to the best of our ability. We all believe in our obligation to leave this beautiful province, this majestic place, as pristine and beautiful as we found it. And we believe, we believe here today that the best way to do that is to grow our economy. Never forget that the world needs British Columbia. The world needs our vast natural resources. The world needs our diverse and talented population. We will continue to reach out across the Pacific Ocean, where we have set our sights firmly on supplying their growing demand for cleaner energy by adding value to our abundant natural gas resource, liquefying it, exporting it to Asia, so that we can create over 100,000 jobs here in British Columbia for people who live here, so that we can create a prosperity fund to pay off the debt for our children in the next 15 years. And with so much opportunity on the horizon, we have an obligation as a generation to make sure that British Columbians are the first in line for those jobs. And as families prosper, as our economy grows stronger, so will our ability to pay for the things that matter, the vital services that allow us to take care of each other. That is the mandate that British Columbians gave us. That's the job. And now, I'm presenting to you today the people who will carry out that task, who will meet that mandate that you have set for us to strengthen our economy, to secure tomorrow for our children and grandchildren. And I want to tell you, British Columbians sent me, sent this province, the most talented group of ML. Linda, is that a call for me? British Columbians sent us the most talented group of MLAs that I think has ever sat in the legislature. And I don't... <laughs> and so I don't know that any Premier has had a more difficult task in choosing a Cabinet than I had. This team that I have chosen is a blend of experience and fresh eyes coming new to government, the fresh perspective that government needs, representing the breadth of our province in its diversity, in its regions, in its economies. But we are united by a common commitment, and that is a commitment to roll up our sleeves and get to work for the people of British Columbia. And so now I'm going to ask each cabinet minister in turn to come up and uh, take their place on the stage behind me. And I want to ask all of you 
to make sure that you don't hold your applause. <laughs> Clap when the spirit moves you. So first, I'd like to introduce to you the man who, we, who on Monday will become our Deputy Premier and Minister of the newly created Portfolio of Natural Gas Development, Rich Coleman. Rich will also continue as Minister Responsible for Housing. <laughs> All right. I see that the local government contingent is very pleased about that, and I'm glad. He is, Rich has been our point man for developing a liquefied natural gas industry in British Columbia. And this is a crucial opportunity for us, and it needs a man of Rich's talents, someone who can work with his colleagues all across government, who can find customers overseas, who can close those deals and bring them home for the people of this province. And he's also going to continue, as I said, his incredible work that he's done in housing. And it's a true illustration of Rich's passions, an understanding that we have an obligation to look after the most vulnerable people in society, but that we can only do that if we grow our economy. And next, the Minister of Finance and the Government House Leader, Mike DeYoung. <laughs> Mike has been an incredible finance minister. He has delivered a prudent fiscal the prudent fiscal management and discipline that we have needed in this province, and he will deliver the foundation on which all of our future success will rest. He will reintroduce and pass Balanced Budget 2013 at this summer's legislative session. It will be the first of four consecutive balanced budgets. <laughs> <laughs> and we will get there by controlling spending, holding the line on taxes for families, and protecting BC's hard-earned and much-deserved AAA credit rating. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike DeYoung. <laughs> the Minister of Forests, Lands, and Natural Resource Operations will continue in the very capable hands of Steve Thompson. His experience in this responsibility is well known and well respected. His priorities will include making sure we get to yes faster for better, through better, more efficient and fair permitting processes for mining applications and all other kinds of economic development in our province. It's something we promised British Columbians we would do and it's something that Steve Thompson is going to ensure we deliver. He's going to partner with the forest industry on annual trade missions to Asia. He's going to work with forest communities on the midterm timber supply. And despite the challenges of the pine beetle devastation, BC's forest industry, make no mistake, BC's forest industry is a sunrise industry. That is thanks to the resilience of the workers, industry leaders, and many thanks to Steve for a steady hand in government. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Thompson. Your new Minister of Health in British Columbia from Kamloops will be Terry Lake.
Terry knows the connection between health care and communities. He was a, a mayor of Kamloops, as you know, and a minister, a fantastic minister of the environment. We need someone of that ability to tackle the complex challenges that we have in health care. We need him to drive innovation so that we can make sure that our costs per capita stay amongst the lowest in this country at the same time that we make sure that we are providing the best health outcomes of any province in Canada. Terry demonstrates his personal commitment to healthy living every single day through the preventative measures he takes in his own life. He's an example for all British Columbians of how to live a healthy life. Uh, Todd, are you saying you want to? <laughs> and Terry will put a, a plan in place to make sure that here in British Columbia, we have a plan for end of life care that will ensure that more British Columbians have the chance to end their lives with the dignity they deserve by doubling the number of hospice beds available. Ladies and gentlemen, Terry Lake. <laughs> British Columbia's new Minister of Aboriginal Relations and Reconciliation will be John Rustad. John is from Nechaco Lakes, and he brings a firm understanding of the need for First Nations consultation and participation. Not just the need, but the obligation that we all must uphold to people of First Nations ancestry. For consultation and participation fully in our economy as well. And so among his priorities, he's going to continue our success in securing non-treaty benefit agreements. We have already, thanks to the hard work of Mary Polak and Ida Chong, beat our jobs plan goal of securing 10 agreements with First Nations. His job will be to secure at least 10 more. He's going to work to finalize long-term treaties and partner with First Nations to seize the economic development opportunities that are out there together so that First Nations children, no matter where they live, urban or rural, have exactly the same chance to succeed that is available to every other child in this province. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, British Columbia's new Minister of Education, Peter Fassbender. Maybe I'll have a drink. <laughs> As the mayor of Langley and a former school trustee and a former entrepreneur, Peter has an outstanding track record of bringing people together and putting those we serve first on his agenda. He has a track record of getting things done. He's going to put that work, put that effort and experience to work on behalf of all of the children who are in K-12 education today. He's going to bring together parents, teachers, school trustees to achieve long-term labor stability in our classrooms so that kids can learn and graduate in British Columbia without disruption. He's going to ensure that in, in addition to traditional academics, children have more access to the trades and arts while they're still in secondary school. And he's going to work with the finance minister to bring in the $1,200 BC education and training grant to help parents save for their children's post-secondary education. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Fassbender. And British Columbia's next Minister of Advanced Education, Amrik Virk. Amrik 
knows from his work as vice chair at, of the board at Kwantlen Polytechnic University, and he knows from being a senior leader in law enforcement that success in life depends on lifelong learning. And he knows that the success of our post-secondary institutions depends on our ability to be able to put students at the heart of every decision that we make in education. And that means working with minister, the Minister of Education. It means working with our institutions, some of the finest institutions you'll find anywhere in the world. It means working with the Minister of Jobs and Skills Training. It means making sure that students have a seamless path to success so that the, when they graduate, they are not just ready for the jobs of the future, they are ready to create the jobs of the future. Ladies and gentlemen, Amrik Verk. And British Columbia's next Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure, also from Kamloops, Todd Stone. Todd knows how to build a business from the ground up, he's done it. And being from Kamloops, he certainly knows the critical importance that transportation plays in connecting our province. And we cannot stop investing in our province's infrastructure. It is the lifeblood of our economy. Todd would lead, will lead the efforts to complete the South Fraser Perimeter Road, the four-laning of the Trans-Canada Highway. He'll continue to work on the replacement for the George Massey Tunnel. He's going to work hard to ensure that our ferry service is both sustainable and affordable for the people of our province. And he is going to make sure that the people of Metro Vancouver have the chance to approve any new funding sources for transportation proposals in British Columbia. Ladies and gentlemen, Todd Stone. And the minister, the new minister of social development and social innovation will be Don McRae. Energy, experience, compassion, that's what Don will bring to working with some of BC's most vulnerable citizens. We have made significant reforms at Community Living British Columbia. Dawn has to make sure that those reforms are fully impl implemented and that they benefit the families they're intended to work for. He'll continue efforts to assist people with disabilities to participate as fully as they can in our economy and our society. Dawn will deliver on our commitment to make BC Canada's most progressive province for people and families living with disabilities. He will push, he will work to push the boundaries of what is possible in social innovation and entrepreneurship. Ladies and gentlemen, from the beautiful Comox Valley, Don McRae. And in the newly formed minister, Ministry of Technology, Innovation and Citizen Services, Andrew Wilkinson will serve as minister. The technology sector was one of the eight sectors targeted in the BC Jobs Plan for growth. That sector needs renewed focus. It needs its own ministry. And it needs a minister who intimately understands the sector. Someone who understands both its complexity and the fact that it is fundamental to the importance of our entire economy. Andrew will also work to bring the new BC Services card into, uh, into the hands of British Columbians which will revolutionize service delivery for the people of our province. He'll also continue our efforts to make sure that our government is open and accessible to citizens wishing to access government and information from government. Ladies and gentlemen from Vancouver Quilchenna, Andrew Wilkinson. And the Minister of Children and Family Development will continue in the capable hands of Stephanie Cadu.
read Stephanie's experience and her strong record of decisive leadership and compassion she's brought to this role so that we can keep working for children and families to ensure that we are there to support them in times of crisis. By implementing the early years strategy that she helped author to make sure that families and children receive the support that they need. And working with the finance minister on the early childhood tax benefit to help make life more affordable for young families who are just getting started. Ladies and gentlemen, from Surrey Cloverdale, Stephanie Kadu. And now the minister, uh, the next minister of energy and mines, and the minister responsible for core review, Bill Bennett. No one, no one understands better than Bill the connection between growing our economy at developing our resources and making sure that there are high paying jobs for BC families. That means growing our clean energy sector. It means growing BC's mining industry. It means building Site C and other renewable power projects to power up liquefied natural gas. It means protecting citizens by minimizing rate increases at BC Hydro. And as Minister responsible for Core Review, Bill is going to lead our work, the first work we have done in Core Review in a decade to find savings and efficiencies in government. Bill won't be too shy, and you'll know this is true, Bill won't be too shy to ask the hard questions. He'll know red tape when he sees it, he'll know outdated regulations, he'll root them out, and he'll advise us on how to get rid of them. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Bill Bennett. And British Columbia's next Minister of Community Sport and Cultural Development from the Caribou will be Coralie Oaks. <laughs> Coralie has championed communities in small businesses, in local government, and in the Caribou. And now she can make sure that communities are ready for the impacts of LNG. Making sure that they benefit from a once in a lifetime opportunity. She'll work with local governments for the next round of federal infrastructure funding. And she'll continue to create a vibrant cultural and sporting, uh, many vibrant cultural and sporting opportunities all across British Columbia. Ladies and gentlemen, from Quinell, Coralie Oaks. In a newly created portfolio of Minister, Ministry of International Trade, Minister Responsible for Asia-Pacific Strategy, and also the Minister Responsible for Multiculturalism, we will be well served by Teresa Watt. You all know Teresa is an accomplished business leader. She understands the vast potential of Asia Pacific for jobs right here at home. She will knock down doors in Asia north and south. She will grow our international trade, diversify our markets. She will ensure that government serves and speaks to all of our diverse population. Teresa will implement our Asia head office strategy to make British Columbia the first choice for Asian companies hoping to locate in North America. And she will help shape our province into a truly international place, a place with its arms open to the entire world. Ladies and gentlemen, Teresa Watt. And now from Vancouver, I'm delighted to reintroduce you to Suzanne Anton, who will be British Columbia's 
Hang on. <laughs> to Suzanne Anton, who will be British Columbia's next Minister of Justice and Attorney General. As a former Crown Prosecutor and longtime Vancouver City Councillor, Suzanne understands what public safety means, and she does not take no for an answer. When things need to be fixed, Suzanne will be there to fix them. And that's what we need to implement the reforms that we need in our justice system. To reduce backlogs, to create greater court efficiencies, to implement our domestic violence prevention strategy, to bring common sense changes to modernize our antiquated liquor laws. Suzanne Anton is replacing... Can you fix that for me, Suzanne? <laughs> Suzanne Anton is, is replacing one tough cookie in Shirley Bond. She's a tough cookie herself. I admire tough women. Ladies and gentlemen, Suzanne Anton. And speaking of tenacity and toughness, our next Minister of Jobs, Tourism, Skills Training and Minister Responsible for Labour will be Shirley Bond. <laughs> Shirley Bond is integrity, tenacity and common sense writ large. And now as the lead minister for Northern British Columbia, where much of our wealth as a province is created, she will lead the acceleration of the BC Jobs Plan. She will help us set those ambitious new goals for the next four years in the plan. She will work with her colleagues to ensure that our education and skills training continuum is seamless for the children and the students that it serves. She will make sure that British Columbians are first in line for the jobs of tomorrow. And she will work respect respectfully with BC's unions to identify ways that we can work together to grow our economy and jobs. The mandate that you have given us is to create jobs. And it's an important one. It's one we intend to honour. And that's why I gave it to Shirley Bond. British, Columbia's, uh, British Columbians are rightfully proud of our incredible natural environment, a heritage we intend to protect, one that British Columbians are counting on us to protect. British Columbia's next Minister of the Environment will be Mary Polak. In all of her work that she's ever done, Mary has demonstrated an understanding of the relationship between a strong economy and a healthy environment. It's a balance that British Columbia is now achieving as North America's leader in the fight against climate change. And Mary will fight to make sure we maintain that leadership, to preserve and protect the majesty of this province that you see behind me, to preserve and protect it for our children and their children, to protect our coast, to protect our land, while at the same time allowing our economy to grow. Ladies and gentlemen, Mary Polak. <laughs> and from the peace country, we find our next Minister of Agriculture in Pat Pym.
Pat is an incredibly strong advocate for rural communities and for agriculture in the peace. A business that has helped build our province from the ground up. He's going to focus his energy on making sure that BC, British Columbians, can buy local products. Opening new markets for BC agriculture in Asia. Breaking down interprovincial barriers so that all Canadians can truly enjoy the world's best wine, BC wine. And Pat, you can expect a few visits from me, BC's most passionate promoter of Okanagan wine. And British Columbia's Minister of State for Small Business and Tourism will be Naomi Yamamoto. <laughs> Naomi has made tremendous progress in working with small business, and tourism is a sector that includes thousands of small, thriving small businesses. And so we're adding that important responsibility to her portfolio as well. Reporting to the Minister of Jobs, Tourism and Skills Training, Naomi will work with the industry to grow tourism as a vital part of our economy. She will complete the small business accord that she started to make sure we keep our promise to become the most small business friendly province in Canada. She's also going to work to level the playing field for small business when it comes to competing for government contracts. She's going to work with the Minister of Jobs and the Minister of Finance to carry out a 40% reduction in the small business tax rate. Ladies and gentlemen from the North Shore, Naomi, Naomi Yamamoto. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is British Columbia's next cabinet. 19 premiers. 19, 19 ministers plus a premier. <laughs> and now is the time to stand and give them a hand. Ministers plus a Premier, it's not a large cabinet, it's smaller than many in the past, but it will be focused because we have work to do as a province together. And none of it, I promise you, will be easy. But you didn't choose easy. You chose to take the path that leads to a brighter future because what we do today absolutely shapes our future tomorrow. And over the past two months, I have said many times, that we can be that generation of British Columbians that future generations will look back on and say, they were the ones that had the vision. They were the ones that transformed our province. They were the ones that made us the economic engine of Canada. They were the ones that charted a course to a debt-free BC. And I know we can do this. I know we can, because I believe in you. In the next four years, there will be ups and downs, days that will test our mettle and our resolve as a government. But there will never come a day when I doubt the spirit of the people of British Columbia. Together, we share important values, values of hard work, values for a strong economy, values for a secure tomorrow for our children with a lasting legacy for a generation of British Columbians yet to come. I know we can do this because I believe in you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Premier. And now I would like to ask Monsignor Ger Gregory Smith, pastor of Christ the Redeemer Parish, to offer a prayer, please. Loving creator of all that is good and beautiful, you have richly blessed British Columbia with both human and natural resources. We thank you for the opportunity to work, prosper, and raise our families in this, our province. Today, we ask you to bless and guide the men and women who will form our next executive council. May they be given the wisdom of good stewards and rewarded for their generous contributions to the welfare of all. May the decisions of our leaders help to make British Columbia a just and thriving society where the dignity of each person is respected and promoted in every policy and program. We ask your blessing on the Premier that her burdens may be lightened as they are shared with others. Gracious God, we thank you for the many ways in which you enable women and men to participate in your plan for creation. And we thank you for granting gifts of leadership to those called to exercise special responsibilities for the common good. We pray in gratitude for the dedication of our fellow citizens who offer themselves in public service. We ask you to bless their families for the sacrifices they make to support the commitment of their loved ones. Amen. Thank you, Monsignor. Well, that concludes the official program. Thank you all so much for joining us today. I would like to invite all the guests to please enjoy themselves and join us at the reception inside Hall C. That is the big room a few steps away, that way. That is where the registration desk were when you came in. For the official photographer, I would like to ask you to come forward, please. Thank you very much. Ain't that a kick in the head?